Greetings everybody. I wanted to put out a video to talk about something that many of you may have either heard about or have undergone or very experienced at or are curious to learn more about this concept of shadow work or the shadow. And really the shadow encompasses everything which we are not fully conscious of, the unknown unconscious aspects of our being. And by the very nature of this shadow or dark energy, it is all the fragmented, hidden or suppressed or denied or oftentimes even outright shunned or rejected parts or energies of ourselves. So this concept of shadow work involves bringing the hidden layers, these shadow energies into our conscious awareness, the light of our awareness. It's not for the faint of heart, it is really a deep transparency, a deep vulnerability that is required that we often talk about here on this channel. And it requires us embodying more and more divine forgiveness, acceptance, and self-loving. What I call F-A-L, falling in love with yourself so you feel more whole. And that acronym of F-A-L, self and radical forgiveness, acceptance, and then eventually leading to self-loving. For you see, this is a process of what many mystics and sages called in the ancient teachings illumination or ascension, the technical process of spiritual awakening. And shadow work is transforming these trapped energy potentials or denser vibrations into a more pure essence, a higher vibe or lighter energies. And this technically enhances our ability to embody more light frequencies. And in fact, this is a key part of what is referred to as the alchemy of transformation. And it is part of the leadership healing stage that we have to go through. And it is correlative to what is called a dark night of the soul, which we also talk about on this channel. Now, healing the shadow self involves clearing, mending, and repairing these energies that we're alluding to. Um, and really these are discordant interferences. And by discordant, we mean they really disrupt the natural energy dynamics or natural biofunctionality, and they prevent us from showing up embodied and with the energies flowing and our life force flowing fully. When we ignore or discount for these underlying or subconscious dynamics in our energy or consciousness field, they don't simply go away and these patterns will play out more overtly. In other words, if you're asleep at the driver's wheel, then the shadow will likely be taking control. So at a very archetypal or more mechanical level, we should say, this is a repulsion force. It is all of the accumulated resistance energy that you've brought into this lifetime and that you've added to in this lifetime that essentially gets in the way of you choosing to be happy. Some may call it self-sabotage or self-resentment and or even at a very deep level self-angst that you may not even know you hold. And it can become a deconstructive force or a destructive force. In a sense, it is all these disowned parts of ourselves, such as the deep shame, the deep guilt or grief, angst, all of the icky, if you will, on a colloquial level. And reclaiming these disowned or displaced energies really, as we've emphasized, does bring wholeness to the energetic systems on so many levels. And it brings about more wholeness in ways where we're no longer torn, we're no longer in a dualistic paradigm, and we embrace all of these trapped energy potentials that we can use for rapid and accelerated growth, as well as to raise our vibration and our consciousness frequency sustainably. So in essence, everything we integrate by doing this type of work is actually an amazing additional energy resource. We recover energy, what was split off can come back in and is unified, and that expands our perspective and awareness. We can show up and participate more fully, more whole in life and in our leadership and are able to and have more capacity to relate to others, connect to others and hold more loving. As 
novelist Henry Miller once noted and said, everything we shut our eyes to, everything we run away from, everything we deny, denigrate, or despise serves to de defeat us in the end. What seems nasty, painful, evil can become a source of beauty, joy, and strength if faced with an open mind. Every moment is a golden one for the person who has the vision to recognize it. And this quote obviously emphasizes the importance of this work. And it does truly take great courage to face what some call the monsters lurking within, these deep shadow energies that have been relegated in our consciousness. And the beautiful thing, as Henry Miller's quote alludes to, is if we are daring enough, the shadows, the fears, the monsters, these suppressed energies and emotions are revealed to be light illusions that they always were. And we're able to step more into this divine love that we've always had within us our true essence becomes apparent. And that's the miracle and the healing that comes from doing this sacred and deep alchemical work. I refer to it in the way that I do it as quantum shadow alchemy. And this potent and deep energetic work really allows us to uproot and transform deep blockages and challenging emotions, such as the shame, angst, and guilt. So leaders can revitalize, feel whole, and have that embodied clarity to step forward more fully. Thank you as always for your interest. There are some links below if you're interested in exploring this type of quantum shadow alchemy or shadow work. And feel free to reach out through the contact information also found in the comment section below. And wishing you a light-filled, inspired, and loving day ahead.